Hey guys, this is Raha and today we are talking about how to best set up your new Panasonic G85 for filmmaking. So I've been shooting with the Panasonic GH4 for the last two, two and a half years. And I've been using the Panasonic G85 for the last three months. So I believe I have enough experience with the Panasonic G series and know my way around the menu to give you guys a bit of a jump start as to how to use this camera for filmmaking. One thing that I want to say up front though is don't tweak things too much. In my experience, if you push the settings too far, you end up with some really low quality and grainy footage. So let's start by putting the camera into movie mode. Let's make sure that the drive dial is set to single. And after turning the camera on and pressing the menu button, we can navigate through the menu with the cursor buttons. And we have four different menus, the motion picture menu, the custom menu, the setup menu, and the playback menu. And we start with the custom menu. And the first thing that we want to do is turn silent mode off because we want to make these adjustments individually because that avoids getting that pesky little silent mode icon in the display. I almost never use autofocus because I want to be in charge of what is in focus and what not. So most of the following autofocus features are being turned off. If we use autofocus, however, we don't want the autofocus assist lamp shining in people's faces. So we turn this off. Direct focus area allows you to move the autofocus area with the cursor buttons. While sometimes very handy, I keep this off for now. For continuous autofocus, you can adjust the autofocus sensitivity. If you want the camera to change focus quickly, you can dial it up to plus two. If you want the camera to change the focus slowly, you can adjust it to minus two. I'll keep it at zero for now. Autofocus plus manual focus we want to enable because it allows us to adjust the focus manually in autofocus mode. We turn on the manual focus assist and assign it to the focus ring and then we set the manual focus assist display to picture in picture. Now let's make sure focus peaking is turned on. This way the camera will highlight the areas of your image that are in focus. It's a feature I couldn't live without. You can also set the detection level that I usually keep at high and the display color. If you want, you can turn on histogram, which gives you a little histogram in the focus area of your display. Usually I turn this feature on only if I really need it, when I'm in harsh lighting conditions and I don't rely on my eyes only. But otherwise, for now, I just turn it off. To make sure my scene is framed properly, I turn guidelines on. There are three different options to choose from. Usually I keep it at the rule of thirds. We turn on the center marker and we definitely turn on highlights. This way, white saturated areas of your image will flash black and white, which is a great indication for overexposure. Zebra pattern will indicate areas whose luminance level exceed the selected value. You can set two different values with zebra 1 and zebra 2, which is a left-leaning or right-leaning pattern. I set mine to 95% and now let's move on. Display exposure meter I usually turn on. I also like to display recording information on the monitor. Let's turn this on and move on. Next, we want to make sure that the red little video button is functional, so we want to turn on video button. Now the eye sensor allows for automatically switching between the live viewfinder and the monitor, which I absolutely hate. So we set the sensitivity to low and the live viewfinder monitor switch to monitor, which allows automatically switching only if the LCD screen is closed. Usually I use the touch functionality of the display and leave the touch settings at their default. And the touch scroll for continuously moving pictures I keep at low. Shooting without lens we definitely want to turn on so we can also use lenses that don't communicate with the camera. Like old manual lenses for example. Now we are browsing through the setup menu and since we have turned off silent mode we want to turn down the beep volume and the e-shutter volume because we don't want people to hear when we operate our camera. Live view mode we set to 30 frames instead of 60 because we don't need the extra frames and I believe this is the last setting that we want to do here in either the custom menu or the setup menu. And with that let's head over to the motion picture menu. Now let's have a look at the picture profiles because this is really what people are talking about the most. You have to set contrast to minus 5 and saturation to minus 3, so on and so forth to get the widest dynamic range possible out of this camera. So let's have a look how I set up my camera. Now with the Panasonic G85 we have several different photo styles. 90% of the time I shoot in cine like D, that is if I want to color grade my footage in post. 
Otherwise, I shoot in cine like V for quick and easy video edits right for social media. In addition to these more cinematic looking picture profiles, we have standard, vivid, neutral, monochrome and several others, but again, I never use those. Each picture profile can be further adjusted or customized if you will, by either dialing up or down the contrast, sharpness, noise reduction or saturation. In Cine like D, I usually keep the contrast at zero because the picture profile is already very flat. If I turn down the contrast even more, I get some funky noise in the image, which I'd like to avoid. I pulled down the sharpness and the noise reduction as the G85 is already very sharp and I can get far better noise reduction in post using neat video. Most importantly for color grading is pulling down saturation. Even though this is a flat picture profile, it's still very saturated. So in post, if I add a LUT or any type of grade to the image, it becomes oversaturated very quickly. And here you have it. These are the picture profile settings that I use most of the time. Now let's save our settings and then let's move on. Now let's move over to recording format and here I choose MP4 over AVC HD, simply because I've made better experiences with MP4. Next we have a look at recording quality and here you have several different options to choose from. You can choose to shoot your video in 4K, Full HD and HD and depending on where you bought your camera you can choose different frame rates as well. I shoot all my videos in 4K and in 25 frames per second. Now let's have a look at the exposure mode and here you have four different options to choose from. P for program to have the camera automatically set the shutter speed and aperture aperture priority, shutter priority and full manual mode. And again I use full manual because this gives me control over the exposure and therefore the look of my video. And now in full manual mode you can use the back dial to set your shutter speed and the front dial for the aperture. And again I almost never use continuous autofocus but if you want to use it here is where you would turn it on. Metering mode are set to measure the brightness of the whole screen. And now let's talk about highlights and shadows, because this is one of the very few features of this camera that is actually increasing usable picture information for better post-processing. With this feature you can adjust the brightness of the bright and dark portions on an image. And you can choose between presets or you can make your own adjustments by using the front dial for the highlights and the back dial for the shadows. As I said earlier, and especially with highlights and shadows, don't tweak things too much because it will introduce a lot of noise to the shadows of your footage and that will give you a very hard time in color grading and post-production. Now let's save our settings and let's move on. I keep eye dynamic and eye resolution off. So let's talk luminance levels because a lot of people think that with adjusting the luminance level settings they can increase the dynamic range of the camera, which isn't really the case. In a typical RG color space, luminance level ranges from 0 to 255, with 0 being black and 255 being pure white. While the Panasonic G85 will let you shoot video at the 0 to 255 range, it also offers shooting in 16 to 255, setting the black level at 16, which helps prevent very crushed blacks when playback either on a computer or broadcast video. The standard for broadcast TV, however, is 16 to 235, and oddly enough, this setting isn't available here. Since I'm editing video for online only, I keep the luminance level at 0 to 255. Digital zoom I never use, but I use the stabilizer function to compensate for handshake and e-stabilization usually I turn off. You want to adjust the sound input level of your mic every time before you shoot to make sure that the audio isn't clipping at any point. Ideally you use an external mic with a very hot signal so you can keep the level at its lowest because the preamps in these type of cameras aren't really the best. Otherwise all the other microphone settings I keep turned off. So this is it guys, this is how to best set up your new Panasonic G85 for filmmaking, at least in my opinion that is. If you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful, please like and subscribe. If you have any questions or feedback, leave a comment down below. And with that, I catch you guys in my next video.